A recent article caught our eyes here at Cheddar, and the headline read, Houston Camp AnyBot Auto says its trucks can drive better than humans. So, of course, we had to ask the man himself, Bot Auto founder and CEO, Dr. Shouty Howe. It is great to have you here today. It's really exciting technology, and we know we had to book you for an interview to learn much more about it and, of course, introduce it to any of our viewers a bit unfamiliar. So let's start there, Dr. Howe, with a bit of an introduction to Bot Auto and what do you feel sets yourselves apart in the general autonomous trucking space? Morning, JD. Glad to be here today. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting and exciting time for autonomous driving uh, because we finally were about to get everything real. And uh, if you're talking about the biggest difference about my company and uh, other companies, I think the, the business model is different. We are an autonomous driving company and we operate the trucks by ourselves. How have uh, you been able to do that from a technological standpoint? I think uh, the general idea of autonomous vehicles is something many more Americans have warmed up to, have learned a lot about, but uh, clearly you're in a position where you're trying to take that technology a bit further. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, from a very general perspective, autonomous driving works like this. Uh, you install sensors, on the on the traditional chassis and uh, also the computing units and with the sensors it basically sends the world create a virtual representation of which surrounding vehicles are and uh, how they're going to behave and then make an optimal decision that drives the, the the vehicle the ego vehicle itself safely on the road. It's basically, you know, the general gist of uh, how autonomous driving is working by seeing the world, sensing the world, and then making the decisions that is safe. You're using 3D mapping, you're using sensors, you're using artificial intelligence. I wonder, is there one core piece of the technology that you think is most impressive behind what the company does? Uh, well, in fact, I would like to say there's a large number of small technologies when combined together in a very coherent way, it actually seems great. Just like, you know, uh, it's really just like iPhone. You know, if you, if you talk about iPhone, there's no single piece of technology that makes the phone great. But uh, in every small piece of it, there are innovation and in every front, we just push it to the very end. How do you prioritize safety in a world that is increasingly reliant on autonomous vehicles? I would actually say that safety is it's not something that we should uh, prioritize because when we say prioritize, it's going to be prioritizing up or prioritizing down. But uh, for safety, it's, it's like a mandatory requirement that we just have to do it. And I think when it, when it comes to safety, the, the difference is not really to say we are setting the target against the the best like human maybe acrobatic driver in the in the in the very uh dangerous environment it's actually we're talking about the daily driving in the public highway and it's some, somehow surprising to see that you know the the major factors that contributing to a an accident were very often uh distracted driving or fatigue driving but if you're thinking about distracted driving or fatigue driving, none of this would ever apply to an AI system because AI would never fatigue, AI would never be distracted by a you know a cellular message or a phone call. So I think those are the things where we see the, the biggest uh, incremental uh, contribution of autonomous driving in terms of the safety. And as I understand it, you're gearing up for a big launch in Texas. There is such an emphasis on the great state of Texas these days for new capital expenditures, for new innovations, for technology exchanges. What makes Texas a great strategic market for your overall growth plans? And what more can we expect from that launch? Well, well, thanks for noting that. Yes, we are thinking about, we're planning uh, in the very final stage actually for our uh, driver out pilot program launching in Texas. So the thing that makes Texas our headquarter is really because of the regulatory environment. Uh, in many other states, the regulation were a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit behind. Where you can do some testing, you can still have driver, but there's no guarantee that when the day that you are ready, the regulators will allow you to operate the 
the, the vehicle without a human in the vehicle. Because at the end of the day, our business is to try to operate more efficiently. And if it's still the driver is required to be in the cabin all the time, we can just keep doing testing, but we will never be able to actually launch the system in the commercial environment. So that will be the key. So to remove human, that would, I think the, the technology has evolved to the moment where that is becoming a reality. And we wanted, wanted to make sure that we're not being uh, dragged down by the regulations. And uh, in Texas, of course, we have a lot of communication, a lot, a lot of conversations to the regulators, to the, uh, to the safety team of the uh, Department of Public, uh, Public Safety, DPS. And all of these are actually uh, contributing to the final moment of removing the human and operating in the public road. Yeah, we, we talk, uh, Dr. Howe, very frequently of the so-called levels of autonomous driving space, L1, L2, L3, et cetera. Where do you currently have your company positioned and where do you hope it's going to be in terms of those popular level scales for autonomy? Oh, we always focus on level four autonomous driving. To me, uh, I don't really distinct level two or level three. Level two or three, is at least you have to have a human behind the driving wheel. So that's level two or three. And starting at level four, you're, you don't really require human driving. But on the other hand, level five is, uh, is probably the, just like artificial general intelligence. It's, it's, it's a goal more in the far future. Uh, level five means basically you can drive anywhere, any, in, in any condition, and you're always going to make the optimal decision. But I personally don't feel that there is any need for level five driving. Level four, in comparison, is that you drive in a very dedicated route. For example, in our case, it's from hub to hub for autonomous trucking to, to commute. And that is where I believe the, the biggest economical interest lies in. What is the biggest potential for the autonomous trucking industry in the future that you think more people should be paying attention to? Uh, I think what we're doing, uh, so maybe one of the biggest misconceptions here is that people would always worry about job security. But right now what we're facing is driver shortage. And the driver shortage is such a big problem that it's starting to become a dragger for the entire economy. For many uh, goods that we are actually trying to, uh, because we're in this market right now, for many goods that we just observe every day is that there are goods awaits for the drivers to ship from A to B. And people are actually not picking up those loads. That's the real problem right now. You can't really have drive, driver shortage and job security at the same time, but right now what we see is that driver shortage is the biggest problem. And that problem is only getting worse. Like we have 80,000 driver shortage as of today. And in 2030, that number will be doubled. So it's really like very imperative for us to do autonomous driving in order to solve this very problem lies in the foundation of the economy. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today for a, a fascinating conversation during a really important time in terms of all of these emerging technologies. Dr. Shaudi Howe is the Bot Auto founder and CEO. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you.